Was it like a specific memory or experience or a mentor that kind of like helped you to understand that, hey, this is what I want to build? My journey in cybersecurity was totally accidental, if I'm being honest here. People often think that to even enter and like kind of explore, you have to be this hardcore maverick tech guy. Some of the best people I've seen in that space are not quote unquote technical people. What is it that you think people are not talking about a lot and something that are, will impact security in a big way in the context of AI right now? Um. I stumbled into cybersecurity by accident. Like many others, I assumed that getting in would be a huge barrier, but it really wasn't. My traditional background still prepped me or gave me the foundation that I needed. And that's why I want to start the series. I want to explore these journeys of amazing cybersecurity leaders who are shaping the industry today. I really want to understand the human aspect of cybersecurity, what got them into it, what drives them, and what really is that one specific thing that they can tell the young generation who are exploring the verticals out today. This won't be a buzzword heavy or overly technical series. It's all about remaining a CISOs at their favorite coffee spots, learn from their experiences, and get something tangible that you can do today. Our first guest is Akshay Vatal, CISO at a leading InfoSec blockchain company. I'm sure you guys would find his perspective refreshingly grounded. Welcome to the series, 10 Minutes with CISOs. I am Prasant Shalar. Let's hear from Akshay. Is this, this is like your favorite coffee place? Yeah, so we found this place accidentally. Actually, my wife did, I can't take credit for that. Uh, coffee is good, they have good food, they have good uh, baguette. Uh, but I think it's had lunch, so I think coffee is perfect. I like the vibe, man. It's really nice. I really feel that cybersecurity is that mysterious place that people end up in. And uh, people are often like really unaware of what they're doing here and how they end up, right? So for you specifically, was it like a specific memory or experience or a mentor that kind of like helped you to understand that, hey, this is what I want to build? Should not be a surprise that my journey in cybersecurity was totally accidental, if I'm being honest here. Right. I, I never intended to right. be a cybersecurity professional or practitioner. Back in the days, during undergraduate years, I had a paper published on cryptography, like one of those IEEE papers mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to do as a part of your curriculum. And five years later, I get this call uh, from one of the companies here in the Valley uh, that, hey, we want to interview you, you for a security role. And I'm thinking, do I have security experience? <laughs> and uh, when I went for the interview, yeah. it double clicked on that paper that I had written like five years back right. uh, on cryptography, you know, image encryption description that actually sparked the journey. And to your second part of the question, like what clicked for me is when I got more and more exposure after I got into the gateways, like right, right. Um, I, I realized that a lot of the funds that get stolen or the incidents that happen, the money goes for international criminal organizations, right? Mm -hmm. Like there is an aspect of that too. And it also ties to my home country yeah. where I'm from and I realized that some of the extremism that we were seeing growing up back in India were tied to these funding from these criminal activities. Okay. That's when I really actually realized that, you know what, um, it became too close to home. It became more personal. And then right. that's when I actually started going deep into cybersecurity, realizing the impact of what these hackers use those funds for or what these funds get transferred to. People often think that to even enter and like kind of explore, you have to be this hardcore maverick tech guy who has all the skills, only then you can explore, right? So in your experience, how do you like, like tackle that in a best format to get away from that mental barrier to explore, like come in and like and try out a few things that help you uh, kind of nurture some of these things? Yeah, good, great question. I think the movies stood us, <laughs> right? You know, uh, our early impression of security professionals, you know, uh, white hat people were like behind screens typing in, right? Right. That's what we saw growing up. Uh, but if you think about it, if I take an example, 
GRC, mm -hmm. Govern Risk and Compliance is a critical space. Yeah. It's an important for a business to function, right? From a regulatory standpoint, from a risk standpoint. And some of the best people I've seen in that space are not quote unquote technical people, mm -hmm. right? They are people from, you know, audit background, a legal background, uh, even business background. And also if you think about, you know, threat research and fraud, big area for, you know, uh, InfoSec for cybersecurity. Okay. Some of the people that I've met uh, and experts in this area come from, you know, human psychology background, ah, which is yeah. interesting. Like, you know, how do you, people interact? Uh, how does human psychology works? And how could that translating to attackers mindset and thinking uh, is another kind of an aspect. So uh, these are some of the areas that I feel that, hey, you don't need to have a core technical background. But in fact, having a different background and different experience and different competency helps actually. What is it that in the context of AI that you are working on or there's a specific problem or challenge that you are solving in, in terms of like AI and people who are already like kind of like going through it might benefit from that? AI being the buzzword, right? Every time I hear AI, I have a you know, smile on my face because that's the, the, the buzz around the valley these days. Yeah. When I think of AI, there are a couple of areas that I think I've, I've seen more tractions in. And I'll come to the part where I'm not seeing a lot much traction. Mm -hmm. But how do you use AI for productivity? Uh, whether it is developer productivity or better tooling for detecting threats. Um, that's AI to improve productivity and developer experience. The second space I've seen this is how do you protect from AI threats? Like, you know, uh, malicious actors using AI, um, you know, things like spear phishing, how do you protect from bad use of AI? But I think one space that people are not talking enough is AI for education. And you're talking specifically in terms of security or? Any, any aspect of it, right? Security, yes, of course. Like, take an example. Can I have an intern come in, use an AI tool to write detection rules, for example? Mm -hmm. What is it that you think people are not talking about a lot and something that should or will impact security in a big way in the context of AI right now? We talk about this huge gap in cybersecurity talent in the market, mm -hmm. right? Hey, I'm not able to find this cybersecurity person. Yeah. But how do we train or cross up train or upskill someone who has just developed a background uh, into cybersecurity using these tools. Yeah. I think there's a big opportunity there. Let's say I am a college grad or still studying or maybe young professional, right? I would call it. I am trying to look into different verticals. I'm exploring different spaces. I'm learning through um, I don't know, like some projects and things like that right now. Uh, and what is it that you would think is that one specific or tangible advice you want to give them to help test the waters uh, that they can do this week? So, so I'll give you two. I know you asked for one, but I'll give you two. I think one is the mindset, right? Change the mindset that cybersecurity is this big, shiny thing which is too far out, you know? Mm -hmm. If you think about it as humans, we think about security day in and day out mm -hmm. in small, small tasks that we do. Yeah. Hey, lock my door, lock the windows, close my car, right? So if you think from that perspective, I feel, personally feel that security is very intuitive. You're taking a lot of decisions day in and day out with respect to security. So stay away from that mindset that security or cybersecurity is hard, right? Um, so that mind shift, shift is something that you can start on day one. Okay. Um, now, from a more tactical perspective, I think going broad would work because it will help you understand like what of your existing skills mm -hmm. are directly transferable. Okay. If you look at the broad scope, right? If you go into a narrow scope, let's say application security, and if you have not had the background, you can easily get to be more motivated there and see that, oh, maybe you know, this is something too tough for me. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it from a broad scope, that gives you like that 36,000 feet view of multiple verticals, and then you can see what of your existing skills today can be transferred to that. I would really like to thank you for your time today. This was amazing. And uh, yeah, I would love to see what you, what you do next. Oh, thank right. you for having me. Happy to share my thoughts. And yeah, 
Thank you so much. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Akshay as much as I did. If you want to hear from anyone specific, do let us know. Until then, have a good one.